We won't get to see his amazing PVT. And honestly, that's probably like the best chance that Ace has to win is just to throw out a lot of mirror matchups like PvP and ZvZ and try and like coin their coin flip their way into a win. Um, not to say that those matchups are coin flips, but there is a small element of luck to them uh, since they are slightly build order dependent and occasionally spawn uh, location dependent. But it's going to be Zanadu, aka Gwemchi, coming out for Air Force Ace. Alright, let me actually have a look at what the first map is. I have all these pages open on Wikipedia, so I'm like super duper prepared today, and by that I mean I actually didn't have this page open, so one second. Uh, the first map looks like it's going to be Sniper Ridge. Alright, alright, good map for PvP. Pretty standard map. Actually, all the Brood Orb maps this season are fairly normal four player maps. They got rid of all the crazy maps from last season, uh, Chain Reaction and, uh, and Outlier specifically. Um, yeah, just those are super weird maps. Anyway. Yeah. Getting started. Okay, game number one. Spawning as the red Protoss in the bottom left. We're going to ally him because he's awesome. We have Jangbi, the, uh, the OSL champion, the defending OSL champion, I should say, because he's still in the current OSL. I hope, they, I, hope I didn't spoil that for anybody, but uh, his quarterfinal match was a little while ago, over a week, I believe. Yeah, about a week and a half ago, so... I don't feel bad playing that. Anyway, uh, the white Protoss at the bottom right will be Xanadu, so let me quickly update my overlay. G7, G5. So yeah, for anyone who uh, hasn't been following the OSL, Jangbi has in fact made it through to the semifinals, where he will face the winner of... Uh, Zero Hiva, I think, which did already happen, but I don't want to spoil that yet because it was just the beginning of this week. I believe that's how it works. Yes, I think so. So he'll be playing a PVZ regardless. Uh, let's see if he can make it all the way again. Win the last Brutor OSL, as sad as it is to say. Uh, it's funny, it must be hard for the camera guy because the, uh, the crowd is looking pretty empty there. It's like you don't have enough people to uh, to troll with your camera. <clears throat> like what happens if one day there's a pro league and there's like no pretty girls or white guys there? Like what do you actually do as the camera guy? I wouldn't know what to do anymore. Oh, Team Liquid! Team Liquid! Yes, by the way guys, uh, Liquid Rising just came out. The documentary about Team Liquid. So everybody should go check that out. Um, it's actually pretty awesome because it's like you can watch it for free. It's like a pay as much as you want system. So you can just pay nothing and then just watch it for free. But don't do that because then you're a jerk. You pay a little bit of money. If you can afford it, you should pay a little bit of money. <laughs> you also get like posters for free and stuff, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I haven't watched it yet also, so don't spoil it. Although I'm not really sure how you would spoil a documentary, considering it's like just real life. Anyway, um, looks like we have a Zell first for Xanadu. I think Jangby put his core down first, so... Yep. Alright. So Jangby obviously will have slightly faster tech, uh, whereas Xanadu is going for a much safer route. Xanadu is going for a way safer route. Look at this, he's, his, his scout is already going to the top left. It's unfortunate for him that he scouted in the wrong direction. But you know, he scouted much earlier. Jangby did not scout at all. He's just going blindly going um, core first. Which, I mean, is not terrible on a four player map like this. And Air Force Ace players actually don't cheese as much as you might think they should, considering uh, the skill discrepancy between their players and like you know top level players like Jangbi. But um, I mean that's not that's not like you know uh, <laughs> not trying to BM Air Force Ace or anything. But it's like it's like how last season Team Eight uh, players did a lot of cheese, just because you know their team just wasn't quite as strong. So they just kept teasing, taking some free wins. Anyway, 
<laughs> Looks like that tilt's not actually positioned correctly. Looks like Jamie just wasn't paying attention because his dragoon's out anyway, so he didn't really care. Oh, 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 no, he just wanted to let his dragoon out. Oh, okay, I see. I see. I was wondering, I was like, why why is that Zell just like ra randomly standing at the bottom of the ramp on the side? It's like, it can't even be a misclick. I've never seen a pro gamer even misclick a Zell down there, so that was just really weird. Anyway, so far both players, uh. Just got their one gateway, getting range. Looks like, ooh, sneaky move from Zangdu actually, hiding his probe there. Man, that is actually really cool. See, he scouted the top right, top left. He obviously knew that Jangbi was bottom left, and his timing was so good that he knew that as the probe got there, the Dragoon would come out, so he needed to hide the probe. Unfortunately for him, his timing was just a little bit off on the second Dragoon, so he is not going to be able to get into scout. Not going to see that the uh, robotics facility has been planted for uh, for Jangbi, but that's alright, because it looks like he's making his at roughly the same time here. But this is actually slightly problematic for uh, Zanadu because they're going mirror build, except that Jangbi saved money from not scouting early and also didn't make an extra zealot in the beginning. Uh, now having that initial zealot is not a problem necessarily, but uh, you in the early you know early mid game you want the extra dragoon like the extra dragoon is much more useful because uh, you can just micro down the zealots pretty easily like they will tank a few shots pretty well um, just because the damage types go in favor of the zealots when they're tanking hits from dragoons but I I would rather have a dragoon just saying anyway it is three gate robo from Jangi so probably just gonna be observers coming out it's interesting that he did put the uh, robo kind of at the top right of his main. Uh, I believe that serves two purposes. First of all, it is fairly standard to, for, to see uh, pro gamers put their robo like right by the ramp in PvP just so you can get the reavers out really quickly. Um, but I think another thing that this is doing is if you look at the base positioning, if an observer from uh, Guemchi, uh, Zanadu, goes over to Jangbi's main, it's very likely that it won't see the robo immediately. Like if it just goes straight across, uh, if you just look on the minimap, it'll just kind of go underneath the robo and he'll go to the nexus, he'll see the three gateways, and then he'll fly around a little bit. So he should see the robo eventually, but um, it would just like delay it by an extra, you know, 10-15 seconds or something, and you know, seeing or I guess he's put the observer there observatory there though, so it wouldn't it wouldn't trick him for that long. But hopefully that's that's kind of what Jangi had in mind when he did that. Maybe I'm just like completely wrong. I don't know. Seems like it'd be a good idea. Um, it's like a lot of times those little things they seem like they wouldn't make a big difference you know it's like oh he only doesn't see it for 10 seconds like what's that doesn't really matter but actually um, you know you, you oftentimes see pro gamers put their buildings in random locations just to make that happen and oh it looks like we have a bit, in, a bit of aggression coming out here for Jangbi he's gonna pick off two zealots here oh my goodness two free zealots he might even get a dragoon here no no not quite uh, I was a bit concerned there because dragoons often have a uh, great difficulty running up ramps. So I was like, oh man, if if Zanadu like gets his dragoon stuck on the ramp and loses one, he's gonna be so dead. Look, look at this lord, he's just like la 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 la. He doesn't even care. He's like, yeah, Jangbi's fine. Jangbi's fine. He's like completely nonchalant, just munching on whatever that is, it's like a cookie or something. Anyway, uh, is he moving down the ramp? Are you serious? Oh man, I think he took a volley on that shuttle as well. Uh, can you can they click the can you click the shuttle please? Either way, lost the dragoon for free. He's now using his reaver to push down. And the, the problem is there's an observer there. Like that that would not necessarily have been a bad move from Zanadu to try and bust down there when the reaver came out, but uh, unfortunately Jangbi just saw everything and oh my god, he's going after the reaver here. I don't know if that's the best idea, but oh my god, Zanadu allows the reaver to die when there's a shuttle right there. What on earth? Oh man, that is that is quite a horrible mistake there, and oh man, I, I okay, I think part of the reason that that happened, um, it's not it's not just because Zanadu's bad, all right, it's not just because of that, it's also because um, like that that is a pretty bold move from Jangbi. Like if I was Zanadu, I would not have expected that at all. Consider like to to run under like run up to the bottom of a ramp like that and try and snipe a reaver on the high ground because there's like a 50% mischance more or less um, shooting onto high ground it's like something weird like 53% exactly or something like that but it's about 50% so you know to try and do a snipe snipe like that is pretty risky um, yeah so Azandu is most likely just like looking in his base macroing or something and then all of a sudden it's like all the dunes run up 
The thing is though, Jangby is pumping from three gateways uh, compared to the two gateways of Zanadu, so he can afford to make moves like that, and he has followed up with his own Reaver, so now Zanadu is completely contained, and Jangby is expanding, as you can see. Uh, and that is the absolute correct play here. In fact, he's just going to pull back here, not going to try and hold the contain. I think that's a little bit of a questionable decision. Oh, I think he was trying to intercept the shuttle, because he thought the shuttle might have been going up the north side. He, did, he, he actually, oh, because his observer in the main base, like, lost sight of the shuttle for a second, so he's like, oh, wait, is he trying to, like, elevator his units out or something for a break? He tried to intercept that, but actually the shuttle was just doing something. Oh, it looks like he's going to go around the top, so it looks like uh, Zanadu going to go for a counterattack here, or a counter harass, I guess, with this Reaver, and, oh, the observer's trying to hunt it down, though, ooh, there's two observers in his base, just seeing everything that's going on here. Like, there's no way Zanadu can, like, do any sneaky moves with these two ops here. Look at he's actually not going to do a sneaky move. He's just going to run down here. He's got four zealots actually tanking. That's a very interesting choice. And, ooh, nice scarab shot. Uh, hitting the middle of that clump of dragoons. Going to get one of these dragoons. And a successful break for Zanadu. Even grabbing another dragoon on the retreat. Jangby's got to be a little bit careful about uh, that shuttle while it retreats. And Jangby actually losing a lot of dragoons on the retreat here. And he has expanded, but his expansion hasn't kicked in yet. This huge attack from Zanadu could do a lot of damage. Oh man, Jangby in full retreat, he, he doesn't even have time to take position on that ridge outside his natural to try and buy some time. Jangby might die to this timing, I don't know, but it looks like Zanadu is going to slow down a little bit here, just use his reavers to push Jangby off the ridge, but it looks like, a, a, look at this very, very nice execution there, leading with one zealot to spot for him onto the high ground. I was going to say, he doesn't have an observer, so I was, I was a little unsure how he was going to spot for those reavers, but uh, using that zealot is a very good move, and looks like he's thinking about expanding up his own while doing this attack, and ooh, he's going to get edged some shots here onto the mineral line. He's got to be really careful about these two reavers, he's got to pick up his reavers and not take shots, and looks like one reaver of Jangby gets sniped, both reavers of Zanadu still alive here, looks like this time he's being much more careful than earlier on at his ramp. Oh man, he's going to start taking down this Nexus as well. He doesn't actually need to do an insane amount of damage. Um, if he can just hold position here, expand himself, kind of deny mining for a little while. Like, I don't think he even necessarily needs to kill the Nexus as long as he doesn't take too much damage himself. Because he's not, he's denying the mining here. There's only three probes mining there, but oh, he does take a shot on those Reavers. Oh man, this is just down to the Reaver mic here. The problem is that, look at this, Jangby has an Observer here spotting. And I think that's going to be a pretty crucial difference here. And the Jangby can actually inch his Reavers forward, get a shot off, and then like pick them up again. And Guamchi, I don't know why he doesn't have an Observer there. Oh, okay, there we go. Finally an Observer comes in. So now the, uh, the, the slight advantage goes to, uh, to Zanadu. The Jangby losing his off there, and oh, nice shot there, grabbing two Reavers for free. I gotta say, this is some really impressive uh, Reaver control from Zanadu. He's playing this so carefully. Recently, we've been seeing a lot of uh, miscontrolled Reavers, notably from Lizzie, although I guess that's not really saying much. Um, but look at this, Zanadu is making absolutely sure not to lose these Reavers, and he's gotta run away, he's gotta run away. You can see Jangby's just waiting for the opportunity to run up with his Dragoons and snipe the shuttle when the Reavers get picked up. Um, but meanwhile, it looks like, oh, I don't think he should do that. Zanadu should not do that. He's moving in. He's actually just forcing an engagement here. He, the shuttle is lost, but Jangby taking so much damage on his Dragoons. Jangby kind of forced into this by the fact that his Nexus is almost dead. It looks like he gets one of the Reavers. There is so much blue goo here, and it looks like though Jangby does have three Reavers. That is so many Reavers. Zanadu is trying to split his Dragoons to minimize the splash damage. Both players losing almost all of their units here, but it looks like Jangby is going to come out ahead. Jangby barely saving his Nexus there. That Nexus is actually down to like half HP. Lost all its shields. Um, but he can continue mining from that. Although, look at this, Zandu now is going to be able to mine from his own natural. And I don't actually know, man, I don't know why they're not showing the supply counters in the bottom right. But I'm really interested to know who's ahead in supply right now. I mean, now the tables have kind of turned. Jangby's the one going on the offensive. Those three Reavers at the end doing an insane amount of damage. And it looks like only two of them were brought to the front. Actually, I don't know if he if he lost one of them. Yeah, it looks like he actually did. He's only got two left. But I mean, it's more than Zanadu has. And actually, Jangby's moving in here. He's going to slap this uh, observer. Oh, oh. Yeah, he's going to get it. So now he has vision advantage. And, well, there are two Reavers here, though. For Guemji, the problem is there's no shuttle to micro them with. And there's no shield battery either, so against these two Reavers of Jangby, they could actually just die to one shot. See, look at this, he, he, can't, he can't keep them clumped like that, because he'll just lose them to one shot from the from those uh, two Reavers of Jangby. Looks like he's actually moving them forward here, and doesn't get a shot off. Is he going to lose one of the Dragoons are moving in? It looks like, ah, uh, Zanadu actually going in, he snipes the shuttle, the Reavers are in red health, 
We're lagging like crazy here, and it might be an even exchange. I'm not sure. Zanadu trying to keep his own Reavers alive, doing a very good job, and it is going to be in favor of Zanadu. I think he did lose one of his Reavers, but he kept the other one alive. He sniped Jangby Shuttle and two Reavers. Jangby looks a little bit nervous, actually. And, and Zanadu got the attack upgrade for Reavers. What the hell? He got the damage upgrade. That is not very common here. Uh, Reavers do have a damage upgrade. You don't—they don't benefit from like plus one attack or anything from the forge, but uh, from the support bay you can get Reaver damage or Scarab damage rather, which increases the damage from a hundred per shot to one hundred and twenty-five damage per shot. That's right, one hundred and twenty-five damage from a single Scarab. That is an insane amount of damage, and that is very interesting. That that uh, Gwemchi got that. Wow, that's pretty cool, and that, that definitely helps him out. I mean, I'm pretty sure that increases the splash damage as well. Anyway, so both players kind of trading armies here. They both have their expansion up. I'm pretty sure they're both getting low on minerals on their main, though. So, uh, so staying relatively low eco. Both players on three gateways and a robo, the same infrastructure. Uh, I'm wondering about the pro count, though. Now, the thing is, see, Jangby had the two next eye for longer. So you'd think he could have a, a few more probes. So the thing is, when the initial attack from, uh, from Zanadu went in, he did lose a few probes to, like, random scarabs. So, I'm not sure if that balanced it out a bit. I feel like Jangby's economy is probably still slightly stronger. But I'm just not really sure. It's been such a, a back and forth game here. It's just really hard to tell. And it looks like, oh, I'm gonna snipe these observers out. Jangby's gonna save his other observer there. <laughs> anyway, it looks like Temple Archives though. Oh, that's very interesting. Look at this. So that's, now, now we can see what, what the difference is. Everything was the same infrastructure, base count. Uh, even unit count is more or less the same, but Jangby does already have a Templar Archives on the way, and Gwemchi's Citadel is only just starting here, so uh, so Jangby does have the tech advantage. Looks like he's also actually going up to five gateways as well, whereas Anandu is still on his three, so Jangby actually does have uh, have the advantage in this game. Although, what is this? Are we going to have an expansion? No, it looks like he's just uh, running that program to spot. I'm surprised he didn't put a pylon there, kind of at the 6 o'clock, just to uh, spot any shuttles coming in for Reaver Harass. I'm actually very surprised he didn't do that. In the meantime, that probe is just, I don't know what the hell that probe is doing. I, I guess he's just going to wait there and then and just act as a spotter in case Jangby's army moves out. It's a bit of a funny location. If you look on the minimap, it's like a little bit out of the way. I think that's just in case an observer moves out. He doesn't want the observer to see the probe, so the probe gets like immediately picked off. Although it looks like Jangby saw it anyway. He's just going to pick that off with two Dragoons. Uh, meanwhile, we have some more gateways going up in Gwemchi's base of the Reaver coming out. It's gonna be interesting though. Um, Reavers, while they are play a dominant role in like the early mid game of PvP, once you get to like the the mid and late game, um, you uh, Templar tech generally becomes a lot more efficient. Uh, Psy storms um, become a lot more efficient than like my, having good Reaver shots. Just because like you don't have to worry about the scarabs like getting caught on stuff, um, you can splash a little bit more effectively. And and if you have like two reavers on a shuttle, it's very easy for the other guy to just like storm it, and then you're just like ah, you have to like spend all your time microing the one shuttle against storms. He just like throws down three storms, and you can't run away anymore. You just lose like both your reavers. You're just really really sad. Hey, that one DT has that been spotted? I think it's been spotted. No, no, that hasn't. That's just a Kakaru. I'm sorry. I looked on the minimap. I thought the Kakaru was like a random observer. I was like, how how is he actually seeing that? Or how did he actually know that was there? In the meantime, observer from uh, Zandu checking out what's going on in Jangby's base. Um, Jangby looks like he is setting up for a third. He is already going for Archon, so it looks like he's not going for Sai, so I'm going for the Archons instead. Um, of course, you basically transition. Yeah, I was just going to say, you transition into a higher uh, Zealot speed law Archon count as opposed to Dragoon counts in the early game. It's, it's actually a pretty huge uh, shift in your unit composition, actually, if you think about it, in PvP. I don't think you actually get such a huge shift like in any of the other... Uh, in any of the mirrors at least. I mean, ZBZ obviously you're mutilating for a long time, and Terran and TVT you're just mecking the whole way. Um, but in, in PvP it's just like, you know, Dragoon Reaver early game, and then Zell, Archon, Templar, with a few supporting Dragoons late game. It's like basically how it goes. Uh, you can mix in a few Reavers of course in the, in the late game, but it's more about the Archons and High Templar. Anyway, oh, oh, gonna inch forward here with these Reavers. Gotta be a little bit careful though. He's getting quite ahead of the rest of his army, and th th the fact that most of his army is now Zealots instead of Dragoons means that it's gonna be difficult for him to run up and support that Reaver or support that shuttle if it goes down. But it looks like, uh oh, Zanadu has got a Dark Templar in the mineral line here, and this is why I always say, in the once you get to the late game, PvP you should always have at least one cannon in each mineral line because it is so easy and so cost efficient for the other guy to just sneak a DT in, and if you don't have 
uh, a cannon there, you're just gonna lose all your probes without noticing. Look at this, 10 kills already on the Dark Templar. This Dark Templar could actually change the course of the game. It looks like Jangby finally notices what's going on. The Archon gonna deal with this guy. 13 kills already on the High Templar. Looks like he's gonna run into the main cause even more havoc. And Zanadu gonna take advantage of this disruption to move uh, to move his forces out, but it looks like all the mining is done in the main anyway, but he's just gonna hide that in the corner here, and look at this, Jangby realizes that uh, his army should not get too out of position, I mean, there's no point bringing back your entire army to deal with one DT, right? He's just gonna leave a few zealots there, he's gonna hold on to this ridge, but he does have that 9 o'clock third now, so that's that could be a little bit vulnerable. Um, Zanadu not gonna break up just yet, I like this, you know, you know, breaking up a ramp and losing his army could be uh, a good way to throw away the game, but it looks like the DT's gonna move in once again, can he get another kill? Looks like, no, not quite, glitching out on the gas probes. A little unfortunate. I think it definitely could have got one or two more kills there, but 13 kills is uh, <laughs> is nothing to scoff at here, especially given how close this game has been. I mean, Jangby had a slight advantage there, but that that could have just evened it out right there. And oh man, Jangby's also moving his army up the narrow ramp to his third. That is a good way to just get caught completely out of position and die. I mean, we recently saw a game between uh, actually who was it? It was an Air Force Ace Protoss against some. Um, I think it was a stats versus somebody, I don't know, it was on this map where uh, the one Protoss got like his army completely out of position on this ramp, but the other guy, and the other guy got like a really good engagement, but unfortunately for him just like was already too far behind, but, but yeah, you just gotta be really careful. Um, it is actually somewhat similar to StarCraft 2 PvP, where just due to like the insane DPS of the Colossi, if you just get caught slightly out of position in the big engagement, you don't have the good Colossus arc, you just like instantly lose. Um, it's just like in, you know, if if uh, if you get stuck on that ramp there and just like a few good storms go down, it could be bad news bears, but meanwhile, uh oh, counter DT going in here. The cannon is actually not a cannon, it's a pylon. Oh my god, why do these guys not build cannons? What is wrong with a good cannon here there? Oh man, was he looking? Oh, he was looking there, he built a cannon there, but then he stopped paying attention. No, Gwemchi! Gwemchi, why did you stop paying attention? Gwemchi, no! Oh no, he sees it. Oh, the cannon goes down. Oh, because the Dark Templar attacked the cannon, so he got the warning there, but oh my god, and Jangby actually attacking here. The army of Gwemchi is completely out of position now. That shuttle could go down even. The shuttle, the shuttle needs to survive, and here we go. Here's the big engagement. It looks like a lot more Archons for Jangby here, and Zanadu did not really get the angle he wanted. Zanadu is getting crushed in the middle of the map. I don't think the DT is even dead yet. I don't know what happened to that DT, but it doesn't matter. Jangby... Jangby pulling off that move beautifully, distracting with the DT and then pouncing on the army here. Look at that ridiculous Archon count, just crushing through everything that Gwemji has. Gwemji is so dead in this game. And I'm sure Jangby's just gonna flood in reinforcements here. He's still got both his Reavers alive. There's a random High Templar there. For Zanadu, not gonna do anything. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. And GG from Zanadu. Jangby taking a pretty back and forth game number one there. It was looking a little bit dangerous for him when Sanadu made that first attack, did that first breakout of his main base. But Jangby will prevail after all. I believe actually Samsung Khan has the best uh, Brood War record overall. Uh, not like overall record because Stars is actually number 